country in the world have the same pattern that India. I mean, French and Belgium are kind of a bubble that have only in comparison Japan for the, the like the devotion to comic book culture. Right. Agree. Now, I mean, uh, you actually told us that you know it's a bit unconventional route that you picked up, right, while going into that. But that was also a kind of an advantage to you because you can do things your way in a way, you know, like you know, people who are more accomplished in drawing cannot do. So you can actually focus on the narrative more. You can focus on the dialogues more. And one of the things that you can actually see in a jewel book or a cartoon is a lot of conversation. So he's, in a way, to me, is a conversational cartoonist. You know, I, I remember of the great Vijay, and you know, in India, who was like that. And he actually admires Lakshman. He just told me. I mean, he, he was a huge fan. But you know, but his style is slightly different. So I'm thinking of Vijay. You know, the the ones. So you know. So this conversational style that you build up, you know, how did you stumble upon it? Or it came organically to you because you wanted to comment on things or because it is this unique conversational tone. It was a cure for me in a way. Because all I deal with is humor. I've never been writing adventure stories or right. like fantasy things, science fiction or uh, or like uh, graphic, like bi autobiographical graphic novels. What I deal with is humor and fantasy, uh, and like uh, and kind of social critics. And this comes from probably a huge anxiety toward the world. And this kind of character is widespread uh, within the community of people dealing with humor, uh, whether it is in cinema or in comic books. I mean, we were mentioning uh, Asterix, uh, which is and Lucky Luke and all those characters who were created by René Goscinny, whose uh, family history was so tragical because of the Holocaust during the war, his family was slaughtered by the Nazis. Same thing for Franquin, another great creator who, was, who suffered depression for decades. And you can find it in uh, uh, like actors or directors doing some comedies. You've got always something within them which is like a little bit troubleful and uh, anxious. I have that. I remember when I was a kid, it was in the 80s, and it was the end of the Cold War, when uh, Russia, the, US, the USSR and America were about to have a nuclear fight, and I was just dreaming, having nightmares every night in my bed about like destruction of humanity and people just going out with masks and uh, uh, discovering that their own city has been just wiped out of the map. And so I was so stressed about that, that I was uh, drawing hundreds of prototypes of nuclear, nuclear bomb shelters. And my parents still keep them, you know, and probably it's useful that they keep them because now, it's, since we have Putin just returning to destroy Europe, uh, maybe I was not so uh, uh, wrong by just uh, fearing them. And at least that kind of thing, and just like pressure, every individual suffering in our society is now. Uh, political pressure, of course, but economical pressure, and all that communication, propaganda, advertising, dictate to us, and all the constraints we have going to work, having to interact with the administration, all that, just weakens us and uh, make it make us bold in a way. And humor, and what I've been doing, like by uh, depicting all those situations, is a way for me to cure this anxiety and to recover a part of freedom that has been taken up as with everybody, you know, by uh, society and social pressure. Yeah. So it's a it's a way to stand instead of going in a way. It's a wonderful answer because David B, one of the greatest uh, you know comic artists, he came to Calcutta with his book Epileptic, right? And he said for me, Epileptic was a kind of you know, uh, you know, almost like a cure to me, and it's almost you know echoed in his words. Uh, so wonderful. But you know, uh, we will jump from one topic to another because we want a lot of responses and we'll also involve the audience at some point of time. One of the very interesting things that Jules has done, and it's iconic in a way, is his restructuring of the Lucky Luke story. So, you know Lucky Luke uh, is a very important character drawn in the Mercimel style, right? So, Lucky Luke, you know, is something that's available right now in India. So, when he began to write the stories, 
uh, he did something with it. So there were some black characters in Lucky Luke which were very stereotyped, and it was there in only one book. I think going up to Mississippi. I think they were like just uh, one is seven going, characters. Yeah, just going up to Mississippi, I think. One. Yeah, going up to Mississippi. So there was only. There were more than eighty albums, and the series existed for more than seventy. And there's years only one book without an appearance of a black character in the U.S. at the end of the 19th century, right, right after the Secession War, which is crazy because it was a full part naturally of America, but it was just uh, vanished right. from the scene, and it was such a shock for me. So, you know, he actually, uh, you know, uh, wrote this book, which came out, I think, 20, 1920, right? Uh, 2020. Yes, with COVID, you just yeah, stopped so counting. actually now translated in English, it's called A Cowboy in High Cotton. And in The Cowboy in High Cotton, he actually creates a black character, which is very positive. So, in a way, he's decolonizing you know, the racial prototypes. So what what how what made you think so and how did you come about that? Because your your lucky you you know redoings, I'm actually calling it redoings because you are almost redefining a character. How did you I and mean, what prompted you uh, of course uh, but, but what are the trigger? What was the trigger? Actually there is a balance to keep when you're taking over the video. Uh, it's been ten years now. So I had to be like faithful to the original series. Right. So there are codes that you really can